Okay, now it is time to take a look at the Fairlight page, DaVinci Resolve's digital audio workstation. We're gonna go over the page and then we're gonna jump into the next lesson where we start adding stuff to the timeline because the Fairlight timeline's a little different than the edit page. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, here is the Fairlight page. If you're not there, just hit Shift-7 on the keyboard or you can click this icon on the bottom. First thing I wanna do is go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout. That'll ensure we're seeing the same thing. So let's just go to the top left and go through this. We've got some familiar things like Media Pool Effects and Index, and then a couple new things, Sound Library and ADR, which again stands for Automated Dialogue Replacement. We're gonna talk about these two things in another lesson. Let's shoot over to the right. We've got Mixer, which of course controls our mixture down on the lower right, just hides it or shows it again. And then Meters hides this entire section up here, just like that. And then we've got Metadata and Inspector, things that we're familiar with. Now let's go down to the left and we have all of our tracks with the corresponding colors that we've assigned them. And if I hit play on the timeline, it shows levels for any of the tracks that have sound. Now moving to the right, we have bus one, which shows us a summary of all the tracks, and then control room, which has a total peak value, and then the loudness meters, which shows everything in luffs, which we'll talk about later on. And then we have our viewer, which we can float if we click this little icon down the lower right, and then clicking that, we'll put it back. Now a little note, if you click on meters, to hide all of that, it hides the viewer too. So if you don't want that, float it first, and then you can click meters, and you'll still have the viewer available to place somewhere else. Now let's go down to the left again, and here we have time code. Shows where our playhead is in the sequence. We can also click on this and manually type something in to go to it. So if I type that in and hit enter, I go to one hour, one minute, 11 seconds, 22 frames, which happens to be this shot. Moving on over, we have the current sequence that we're in, and we can hit the drop down and see other available sequences. And then next we have some play controls. We have a loop icon, which comes into play quite a bit. And then we have some automation stuff, which we're gonna talk about later. And then move on to the right, we've got a master volume for bus one, and this is just a monitoring volume. It does nothing to the actual levels on your tracks. So I can turn this down and it affects how loud everything is that I'm hearing. If I click this DIM icon, it lowers it by around minus 15 decibels. So if you see that yellow, it's been lowered quite a bit. So don't crank up the volume knob on your hardware and then click this and play, because it's gonna blow you away. Going down and to the left again, here we have a way to mark an in and an out, and then it shows the duration of what we've marked. We can also mark in and outs if you've got that mapped to your keyboard from the edit page, that still works. So now it's showing me where I marked and then how long that is. I can clear those like normal. Moving over to the right again, we've got timeline view options. And there's a lot of things you can play around with here. I'm just gonna mention two or three of these. The first icon here will hide the video tracks. This third icon deals with the waveform outline. So this is unique to Fairlight. Let me zoom in here. And by default, there's a little black outline on the waveforms. I can disable that, like that, and then drop down to the third section, and this is timeline scrolling. So the default is just like the edit page. You can scrub through your timeline by clicking and dragging the playhead. But if you click this first icon, it locks the playhead in place, and then you just click up here and do that, which is similar to the cut page. I'm gonna put it back to the default. And then one other thing, scroller. So down here we have a scroller and we have options. Right now it's showing video. I can change that and have it also show audio waveforms as I'm playing and I can choose which track it's displaying. So I'm gonna leave video on because I like that. And so you can mess around with the other options in here, but moving on, we have grid view options. So this allows you to enable a grid on the timeline for some very precise editing. Let me zoom in quite a bit here. And then if I enable this, and then I see a bunch of lines show up, and these are based on my resolution setting. So right now it's at one frame. So that means each one of these is one frame. I can change that to one second, there we go. Or I could change it to a quarter frame, which is even smaller. And by the way, if you're not zoomed in far enough and you change between quarter and full frame, 
you might not see any difference here until you zoom in on the timeline. So I'm gonna leave it at frame. Now, why would you do this? Well, for example, if you just want guides, if you're lining stuff up, it can be handy. Also, if you click the snap to grid, it's going to behave differently. Now, I don't know about you, we've talked about this on the edit page, but I typically leave snapping off, right? Because I like precise placement as I'm moving things around. So for example, let me disable snapping and it's disabled here. And so if I make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. So if I drag this clip, I wanna be able to drop it exactly where I want it to be. But if I have snap to grid turned on, now if I drag it, it's gonna to snap to the closest grid mark like that. So again, just a nice tool for certain situations. Also for time scale, you can change it instead of frames, you can change it to musical stuff. We've got tempo, notes, quarter note, half note, etc. So that's probably for composers, people recording music, etc. So I leave it at this if I'm using the grid view at all. So I'm gonna turn this off. And now let's keep moving to the right. This looks like our selection mode from the edit page, but it's called pointer mode here. And it behaves in a very similar fashion. This is range mode and this is focus mode. We're gonna talk about these later, but they allow you to do some pretty cool stuff on the Fairlight page. And here's the pencil, which something it deals with is automation, which we're gonna cover later on. And then we've got, of course, our razor, snapping, and then linked selection, which we've covered in the past. Now this is new here. Automation follows edit. So this ties into all of this, but in a nutshell, if I add automation to a clip and then move that clip on the timeline, I want my automation to move with my clip. I don't want it locked to that place on the timeline. So having this enabled, which is the default, will allow it to do that. And then we've got markers, and then this is very interesting. It's called transient detection. So transients are the initial spikes in waveforms. Let me find something that applies here really fast. Okay, so here I have Foley sound for her running across the yard, right? Now this is already edited and placed, but normally you're gonna have one solid clip with a bunch of different footsteps, and then you've gotta cut those up and place them to match the actor's feet. And we get into all this later with the Foley sound lesson. But the transients will notice these little initial peaks of the Foley footsteps. And so with that on, if I go back to timeline view options, go to the second row navigation options in this last icon and turn that on, what it's gonna let me do is use my up and down arrows to go from one transient to the next, which can help me in a long clip of footsteps, just quickly cut them all up. Now a little, a little word on this. I never use this type of tool. I'm not a sound designer. I'm not cranking through audio every day on movies. I'm just working on my own projects, and so I just manually cut the stuff up and place it. But if your primary job is to edit sound, to work on as many projects as you want to, then the more efficient you are in Fairlight, then the more time you have to work on a lot more projects. So if I was full-time sound design and I'm sitting all day placing fully, then you bet I'm gonna be rocking some of these tools. But I just don't want you to get overwhelmed with, oh man, that's all so complicated, why can't I just manually cut it up? You absolutely can, that's what I do. Just wanna show you what it is. So I'm gonna turn that off, and then these next two items allow you to change the height of your tracks and the width. And now here's something very cool that I didn't know you could do until I started doing my sound design for Reckoning in Fairlight. If I hold Shift down on the keyboard and then scroll with my mouse, I can do that. And then if I hold Option down, look what you can do. Super nice. I still like to use my up and down arrows for that as well, but it's nice to have this other option. Okay, moving on down, back to the left. Now we've got our tracks. And to see all of the information that our track headers will show us, we need these to be taller. So let's expand those. Once you see clips, you're seeing all of the information. See if I start making them too short, clips goes away. Okay, so there we go, clips. All right, so what we got here? First, we've got the track number. So this is audio five. Then we've got the name that we've assigned to it, and then the one or a two specifies mono or stereo. And there are other options too if you're using them. And then this right here allows us to adjust the volume on the entire track if you click and drag up or down. So let's say you were playing and you wanted to match, maybe this was Ambience, so we're down here on an ambience track and we're wanting to match it with the scene 
and you can just hit play and start kind of adjusting it here on the fly. But you can do that with faders too. This is just another area to do it. And then what else do we have? Okay, we've got a lock track icon. We've got a record, so we can arm the track for recording if we're recording something directly into Fairlight. Even with ADR and stuff, I'm typically just grabbing a shotgun mic and a field recorder and doing it that way, but that's what that is. And then of course, solo and mute. And then this drop down and this little icon here has to do with automation. And this just shows the total amount of clips on this particular track. And then finally, we've got an individual track meter. So if I play this. But wait, it's almost evening. It shows me the levels. And of course, we've got the timeline. I'm going to go over adding media and removing media from the timeline in the next lesson. And then moving over to the right, we've got our mixer and we've got fader controls, effects stuff, and all kinds of things that we will look at in more detail in the course. Dropping down again, we've already talked about this, but we've got our scroller, which we can control on timeline view options, and then scroller. Okay, so that's the Fairlight page in a nutshell. We're gonna get really familiar with all of these tools and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I love this interface. It was a little confusing at first and once you get used to it, you really like working in this even more than the edit page, which is saying a lot. So if you have any questions, post in the community. Otherwise, I will see you in that next lesson very soon. Oh.